Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. As you guys can see up on the screen today, I wanted to talk a little bit about TSM FTX. Now, obviously I know today they have a playoff matchup coming up. They're going to be playing against Immortals. Now, I personally, personally as a TSM fan, as an LCS fan, as a Western League of Legends fan, I'm not that excited for this series, and I really don't think a lot of other people are either. I've been very, very vocal saying that I hate how the LCS playoffs is set up, how I hate that eight teams make the playoffs, and we get a ton of boring matchups like this. Now, this does not mean that Immortals has no chance of winning, that they have no chance of making an interesting series, that they have no chance of beating TSM, but TSM versus Immortals is not a playoff series that going into it, I am that excited about that. I am going to be, you know, just glued to the screen, uh, you know, making sure I can't miss a single second, single game, anything like that. Um, and usually I don't like posting videos right around series or, or, or games because the videos don't perform as well because people are watching those games instead of watching videos on YouTube. But uh, I'm a little bit more hopeful that this video will still be able to do well, even though TSM and Immortals is going to be going on. We're going to be talking about some off-season news for TSM instead. So definitely drop a like if you guys do enjoy this video. I would appreciate it so, so much. Subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content. And consider checking out my Patreon, patreon.com slash IamGerm. If you guys want to go that little bit of an extra mile, helping support me, my content, and my channel. With that being said, let's get right into this. So um, we've talked a little bit previously about some things that TSM might need to do this offseason. Um, last season was very, very strange for TSM. Uh, you know, they lost Bjergsen, they lost Doublelift, um, they decided to move on from Broken Blade, uh, and they decided to go out and get a new support. And, and they spent a ton of money in doing so, in, in landing Sword Art, and obviously everyone knows that. Um, and now they're in a tough spot where they're going to have to beat Cloud9 to even end up qualifying for Worlds. And, and TSM is an organization that has won a ton of titles, has gone to Worlds a bunch, but they haven't had a ton of success at Worlds international events and that is absolutely where they want to be that's where they need to be so even though they had a pretty good season this year even though they finished first place in the lcs um even though they have they still have a chance to make it to worlds they could still get uh they could still win the whole split but you know they could still be the third seed or, or any uh, any of the seeds for na at worlds um i don't think reggie i don't think tsm is going to be nor should they be just okay with what's happened and be complacent and we talked yesterday about how uh the rumors are going around that they're expected to kick lost and, and to move on from him, whether it's sending him back down to Academy, whether it's to sell him off. He's actually 22 years old, I want to say. So it's not like he's some super, super young and experienced AD carry. Um, so I, I think it's unlikely they would send him back down to Academy. Maybe they can sell him off to somebody. I don't really know. Um, but I do think TSM needs to make a lot of upgrades. They need to get significantly better. And, and what was hard for them last offseason is they were just a team that never had a lot of money. That was always a problem for TSM. They were a business. They were one of the teams trying to be profitable. So they would... You know, they would buy players for, for not very big buyouts. It would sign them to a little bit cheaper contracts. They weren't throwing around the kind of money that Team Liquid was consistently throwing around. They weren't throwing around the kind of money that Cloud9 threw out for perks. Um, but they finally decided to get a little bit aggressive last offseason, which I thought was strange because why are you, you know, shelling out all this money for Sword Art the same offseason that Doublelift is retiring, the same offseason that Bjergsen is retiring? Uh, you know, it, it, your team likely wasn't to come back from that and be able to make it to Worlds and be super, super competitive. But now, obviously, that they have signed this TSM FTX deal, you know, they're, they're saying they are going to spend a lot of this money on international growth. You know, they have TSM Japan, they have TSM India, they have TSM Brazil. They're trying to expand the brand. They're trying to go global with the TSM name. Not that the TSM name isn't already global, but they are absolutely going to be spending some of this money on their North American League of Legends team. This is their bread and butter. This is how they've gotten to where they are today. This is how they have their, what, 200, 300, 400 million dollar valuation from Forbes or whatever. This is their big money maker. Some portion of that FTX money is going to be going back to this team and they're going to be looking to spend. And in one of those ways, um, yes, I think it's 80 carry. There, there's so many different options for them to to look at for 80 carries. But I also think changes in the top lane are at least going to be discussed. And the big rumor here coming out from Cobalt today is that if this is a massive, massive if, if Broken Blade goes to 100 thieves, which if you're thinking that's not possible, that doesn't sound possible, whatever. Um, you know, I, I made a whole video going into this, but pretty much the situations where BB could go to 100 thieves is one, if uh, 100 thieves decides to start Kenvy in the jungle, you know, closer would be out. They'd have an import slot open. They could grab Broken Blade in the top lane. Also, if Riot decides to remove the import rule, 
then uh, Hunter Thieves could have three imports, Broken Blade, uh, Closer, and Abadage. And then actually the third option is if Riot doesn't completely remove the import rule, but one idea being thrown around is that they would just make minor regions not count as imports in the major regions, but major region imports would still count as imports. And that would actually make uh, Broken Blade and Closer not be imports, which is another way that this could could get done. So if Riot makes any changes at all to the import rule, Broken Blade could potentially go to 100 Thieves. And if 100 Thieves really believes in Kenby, which Papa Smithy has come out and said he thinks Kenby is going to be a future superstar in the LCS, not just good, not just great, one of the best players in the entire LCS, I could see them, you know, potentially starting him in the jungle next season. Uh, but the rumors out there are that 100 Thieves are going to really, really try and get Broken Blade, um, which again would mean someday would be on the market. They would be selling him off. He is still under contract. He is not a free agent. And also he is now a North American resident, uh, which means they, uh, he's a lot more valuable, which means they could sell him off for potentially a lot more than when he was an import. Uh, and Cobalt does say here that he knows for a fact, he is very, very positive about this. This is if Broken Blade goes to 100 Thieves, there is a certain FTX rich team looking to potentially sign a different resident top laner like Someday. Now, he doesn't say trying to sign Someday, he just says trying to sign another resident top laner. The other option there would be Licorice, but are Golden Guardians really going to give him up? Maybe it depends if they're trying to cash out. Obviously, he had a really, really strong end to the season. Maybe there's some value there. The other option would be impact, but we haven't really seen any, you know, rumors or anything like that. That impact could be for sale. Evil Geniuses just got him as well. So kind of the, the odd man out would be someday, especially if Hunter Thieves has another top laner and then someday becomes the odd man out. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how expensive someday would be. He hasn't been great recently um and there is some conversation like in the comments here and stuff of who's even better between hooney and someday would someday be an upgrade over hooney um and they kind of do talk about this how uh for clarification csd at 10 and 15 are higher for someday than hooney um cs per minute and uh dspm are all quite higher than hooney and his deaths are also lower and has more kills um cobalt does say that the only stat hooney beats someday in is kill participation by 3.6 percent um, so there really is some debate between who is better. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think you could argue someday's better. I'm personally not a huge fan of either one of them. I think they're both middle of the pack LCS top laners at this point in their career. I mean, I think you have Alfari as a clear number one. Impact is a really close number two for me. And then Fudge has really thrown himself in that conversation as well, especially if he's able to keep developing for the future. And then in that four, five, six range, you know, you have Hooney, you have Someday, you maybe have Licorice if he's able to keep this up in the next season. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that does really, really become interesting. Um, would TSM go after a Someday? Would they go after a Licorice? Would they keep Hooney? I don't know. I could really see them doing any of these. I, I don't necessarily know why they would go out and buy someday when they already have Hooney. Um, I don't think someday is that big of an upgrade if he's even an upgrade at all. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if they do decide to move on from Hooney because I have not personally been that impressed with them. Yes, he got third, uh, third all team pro in the LCS in the summer split, but um, I, I think there's a lot to be desired with Hooney. I think he's just kind of been not bad, but not like great ever. He hasn't been like, a big standout for TSM. And I really think, uh, again, if they want to not just be making it to Worlds, but they want to be going to Worlds and actually doing something, getting out of groups, competing for semis, I don't think Hooney is going to be the top laner that's really going to do that for them, um, especially this current iteration of TSM. So. That's just kind of my thoughts and opinions on the whole thing, but there definitely is some rumors floating around about potentially uh, TSM someday being out there again. I don't know how realistic that is. I don't know how possible that is. I don't even know if it'd be a good idea for TSM, but for whatever reason, this is a rumor. People are talking about it. It might be something going on behind the scenes. Obviously, someday would need to go somewhere if 100 Thieves decides to bring in BB. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate it so, so much. Leave a comment down below. Do you think this would make any sense? Do you think Someday is better than Hooney? Do you think Hooney's better than Someday? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to Save Today and all my latest content. Hopefully catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.